Okay, guys, you know what time of the year it is. You know what time of the year the time of the year. It's the time of the year where Bungie releases a brand new DLC for the Destiny franchise. And yes, I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight it. Are you a fight it? Come on, you got to be a fight it with me. You got to be a fight it. You got to be a fight it. This just came across my desk. Bungie VidDoc. A vid doc. I've never heard of a vid doc before, but this is the first one. It's about 14 minutes. I'm about to see what it's about. And I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited. Let's just see what it's about. I'm not even going to waste your time. We're just going to go right into it and see what it's about. Okay. Beyond Light kicks off the next trilogy of stories that we're trying to tell with Destiny. What is that? Oh. The player is going to go on a journey to discover the true nature of light and dark. It's the beginning of players learning more about the darkness. Well, he's looking scrubby, so you know they've been working hard on They're this game. Going so far as to wield it. It's about leaving comfort and safety behind, walking a different road than one Look that, that you may have right destined for. What makes something bad? What makes darkness dark? Who's right? Who wasn't? Okay. How are those learnings going to change the, the characters that you have gotten to know over the last six years? I hope he's not sick. He feels a little, little sick to me. I don't know. Force in the storm. So I'm assuming it has to do with Europa. The ice, the ice, the ice moon of, of Jupiter. What is that? Beyond Light's really the beginning of a new adventure. Guardians for the longest time have been bathed in the light, sort of this altruistic force fighting back evil. And now we're starting to move into that gray area between the light and dark. If the darkness reaches out, we must reach back. I will not sanction this. In Season of Arrivals, the vanguard is divided. You have some characters telling you, you know, we should fight these ships, and we have other characters who are saying, no, 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 we should find out what they want. We should get to know them and understand more. But it definitely comes to a head. Yeah. This next year in Destiny That's is true. really just about how all the different characters and factions are reacting to these disappeared destinations and what that means as the pyramids have arrived in our system, not for the first time, but for the second time. So if we're going to see the return of a character who's been absent for a pretty long if time, this is the second time. They should know the what the, the pyramid ships are. To say, and she has a lot of time to explain. When I know more, you'll know more. She has shown up to encourage us to take on the darkness, and the only way to truly stop it is to work with it. And here comes our guardian, right on time. Exo Stranger! They said they had no plans with her before. Why did the darkness invite us here? Europa is literally like a time capsule. Europa is huge. Killer destination, freezing cold. Desolate. Some of the most beautiful spaces I've ever seen in a video game. OK. OK. There was a lot built on Europa during the Golden Age, and a lot of that was built underground. Clovis Bray had some research facilities there, really pushing the limits of technology and innovation there, maybe stepping into some things that we shouldn't have. Uh -huh. Under the eyes, all kinds of secrets. I'm so excited for what players are going to find. Are you excited? <laughs> The storm on Europa was actually something we've wanted to do for a long time. The storm under Europa? We wanted it to feel harsh. The weather system is so awesome. Like, you're walking through an open space, and all of a sudden, things start happening. Coming across, like, Fallen or Vex <gasps> for the first time, you can barely make out the glow in their eyes. The sound of the wind, the ice, will change based on what the weather is looking like. You'll actually feel every piece of the environment changing around you to match the storm. Okay. That's something new I've never seen before in, in any um, 
any environment. Europa itself is a pretty foreboding place. Aramis is there in advance of us, and she set up a forward base. She has lieutenants who have gotten their hands on stasis, gotten their hands on the darkness, and they're learning to wield it. One by one, we will rise again. And so I think her motivations are really interesting, too. Today, Mr. Foreman. we begin breaking free from our chains. Aramis really challenges a lot of the ways that we think about light and darkness. She's going to make you think about your relationship with the Traveler. She's a compelling leader, okay. and she has a vision. And especially after the collapse of their society, people, I think, the Fallen wanted someone to follow. Is the light going to be enough? I think we've seen that we need some new tools to fight our enemies with. Maybe it's time to fight fire with fire, or ice with ice. Is there going to be an ice subclass? Ice subclass? Wait, wait a second. This is, uh, you know, not just a set of new supers, but it's a new damage type. Ice subclass, baby, let's go. Stasis. Wait, hold on. Marksman dodge. The idea for stasis all really came back from Come the on, gameplay son. idea of freezing someone. That was kind of the theme that everyone's kind of rallying behind. We you got know, a new subclass, baby. So when we say Sub -Zero? cosmic ice, that's kind of where the cosmic comes in. Once he freezes solid, I'm able to hit him again and shatter him into pieces. Man, sub zero the in the building, man. Break apart and explode in those sharp shards that can damage you. Can you imagine so as a hunter, just like dodge, like <laughs> freeze him, chase that. All right, never mind. I'm gonna be quiet. Stasis is gonna not only change the way that you can attack or approach combat. There's also some really great ways that you can upgrade it. Then you start getting into like the more interesting parts, things that we're calling aspects and fragments, which are additional ways to modify your subclass. Yo, they're completely revamping this. This is what we've been waiting for, bro. And then the fragments are the things that are class agnostic, but depending on what your class is and depending on what your aspects are and how you want to play, you're probably going to be starting to select different ones in there. This is just the beginning for Stasis. We're going to continue to expand on it. We're just excited for players to get their hands on this. Facts. Me too. That was like this stuff. Okay. No time to explain is coming back. Again. Instead of just being the gun that refills your magazine when you land precision hits, you actually get a little time portal and it starts spitting out rounds alongside you. Wait, what? You can actually have that on top of the arc soul so you can be your own little mini firing squad and build for it. Another one we have is the they gonna spam that in Crucible, man. It uses man. up your sword's energy to give yourself a new combo, and that ends up in a big spinning slash. Probably the largest selling point for a lot of people is that it slices right through barrier champions. I think the largest draw for most people is actually gonna be the fact that it is a chainsaw sword. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that fits the Titan. For Beyond Light, we really wanted to create exotic armor pieces that formed a key part of your build around which all the other parts of your build could revolve. Okay. For example, the Titan gets the Icefall Mantle, which is a set of exotic arms that looks like it is crafted from Golden Age tech. When you activate it, you sort of slam your arms down, create a burst of stasis energy, and then you cover yourself in an overshield. The Warlock exotic mm. is Necrotic Grip. If you are facing a wave of thralls running at you, you can nail them with your melee attack, and it starts to burst and sort of cascade through the whole group. What about the hunters? What did the hunters get? They didn't say. There's a lot there for newcomers coming we in. We always got a friend who hasn't tried it out. It's a really great time to jump in on new light, that entry experience for free players. The Cosmodrome is back. Yes, we know that. Last year, when New Light launched, we brought back a small portion of the Cosmodrome. This year, we're bringing back a much larger portion of the destination. It takes some of the experiences that started with original Destiny 1, but puts them and stitches them together in a different way and adds new things and tells a, a different story. And what you're going to meet in this new opening experience is a character with not one, but two names. 
from Fast and the Furious, Shaw Han. Thank the light. Shaw Han. I didn't think we had other Guardians on patrol here. What I love about the Cosmodrome is it feels like destiny distilled. Yo, this is getting, this is, uh, this is late. Hunt picks up where arrivals left off. Other forces are taking advantage of the darkness to make their move forward, including Zivul Rath, a sister of Oryx. And she's taking this opportunity to build up an army. And we're working with Osiris to try to stop her. Osiris goes out, stumbles across these hive growths that are driving combatants crazy. Osiris is in trouble, and of course, you're his only hope. As always, where's Saint-14 at, too? Who is that? I thought we killed this guy. We warned you it was going to be dangerous down here. Yo. Impossible. Nah, son. Nah, son. Nah, hold on. If they can bring this guy back, they can bring we Cade back. Why would you bring him back? Why would you waste that life on him? Where we saw Aldrin being brought back to life by a ghost. I don't want to see that. Aldrin, who now refers to himself as Crow, he doesn't know what he did. The slate's been wiped clean when he was resurrected <laughs> as a guardian. We know what he's done, and we know what he could be capable of doing. So now we're going to spend some time watching him go back and forth. and. That's going to question how we look at him, how we look at ourselves, how we look at the light, how we look at darkness. Bring Cade so back, bro. We're partnering with the Crow and Osiris to take down the High Celebrant. It's creating these cryptoliths around the system, and those cryptoliths are attracting Elixian Cabal and corrupting them. So Zebu Arath is essentially corrupting herself and army, and it's our job to put a stop to it. I'm really excited to see Zebu Arath fleshed out more. And to this looks like a whole new game to me. With Sabathun and what that means for year four of Destiny. Sabathun has been placing dominoes. And at the end of year four, she's going to knock down the dominoes. We're going to see what she's doing really up to. And so this year, she's putting the last pieces in place. Gotcha. Destiny is just a really incredible world. And there are so many stories for us to tell. We have a lot to look forward to, beyond light, then the Witch Queen, then Lightfall, and all the seasonal content between. We feel like we've got a really great way to bring people together. Working through COVID and working through some of the other turmoil in the world right now has been really challenging. I have to admit, I've been pleasantly surprised with how well we've been able to get things done. We're committed to your characters and your community of players. We want to meet you where you are. I think the thing that excites me the most about Destiny's future is how much it's rooted in where we come from. Seeing been through a lot revealed, since 2014. Uh, finding out secrets that we've been hinting at for years. When I look at the team that we're building and continuing to grow. I do not want to work with Aldrin. The new I want to work with Kate. Coming up in Destiny, that gets me super excited. I'd rather than bring back anybody else but him. Bring back the Queen. Destiny's best days are ahead of us. Bring back anybody but him. Bring back orcs. Yo! Yo! I'm excited. I'm excited, guys. That looks crazy. There's a lot to look forward to. I gotta go, kind of go through it again and dissect every new feature that they said they added, which is pretty much a lot. So, um, I cannot wait. I have to level up my Guardian so that we're prepared for the next season. I don't think it's gonna be that difficult, you know? I haven't played the seasons since the last trailer, but it's okay. I shall be prepared. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you guys like the new subclasses? Do you guys like anything you just saw here? Um, do you guys want to see something else? Do you guys agree with me on Cade? I know I know there's there's a lot of people that do. Okay, since Cade is gone, there's not been any funny moments in the game. And I don't like Drifter. I feel like they use Drifter as a replacement for Cade. I don't I'm not feeling Drifter. 
So let me know. But either way, take care of your family, take care of your friends, take care of everything regarding you and each other. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right. Peace.